Welcome to Obsidian TTRPGTutorials.com. Let's learn how to use the tool. All right, g'day guys, and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Tonight, we're gonna have another look at the Fantasy Stat Block plugin. Uh, there's been a request from the uh, Obsidian TTRPG community Discord to do a video on how to install the Call of Cthulhu Fantasy Stat Block layout. All right, now, if anyone's wondering what I'm talking about, uh, we'll bring over the GitHub here. What I've done is I've actually just done a search for the Fantasy Stat Blocks GitHub site. All right, so that's relatively easy. You go Obsidian, Fantasy Stat Blocks, do a search for it, and the GitHub site comes up. All right, within that, you can actually find this discussion tab. And the discussion tab is where people were really sharing a large amount of layouts. All right, so you can see this is the layout uh, discussion. Um, within here, people have just basically shared all these different layouts that they've made over a period of time. All right, now specifically for tonight, what I'm gonna do is I've found one for the Call of Cthulhu um, that's been made by the community. Uh, if anyone's wondering about that, um, over in the community Discord, uh, we do have a section for games, right? So if we jump into the Obsidian TTRPG community Discord, we have game systems. And in here, we have just chat channels, basically, for people to talk about specific um, games that they play. Um, one of the ones that we've uh, been having a conversation on is, is the Call of Cthulhu, um, 7th edition. Um, and we can see Bayer here has actually released um, something. And um, what we're going to do tonight is basically go through that and show you how to get that to work. All right. Now, it's relatively simple. I've found the links inside of that um that chat channel and basically just gone in and grabbed that um, and then we're just going to go through and do a download so let's just grab the links all right bio's added an npc folder here all right which is just a google drive and it's shared so inside there we can find the mythos monsters and in there we can see the cock01 npc.json and the coc01 generic.json now the JSON files are basically the layout for the fantasy stat blocks. All right, so the first thing we do is download those. All right, they'll obviously download to our computer, but there's also some MD files here. So let's go ahead and download those as well. Basically, a custom layout requires two things. It requires the actual layout to be imported into the fantasy plugin, uh, fantasy stat blocks plugin, and then that layout is designed to work with a specific data structure. So the things that we've just downloaded are basically going to be used for that. All right, now I've got a brand new vault here, brand new, fresh, I've just created it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to settings. We're gonna to go to community plugins and turn on the community plugins. From there, we're gonna go browse. I'm gonna go fantasy stat blocks by Jeremy Valentine, AKA Javelin. We're gonna click install. That's going to go through and uh, obviously install that plugin. While that's happening, I'm going to do the initiative tracker as well, just because these two plugins sort of work together, right? One is designed to work with the other. You don't have to use the initiative tracker. You could just use fantasy stat blocks, uh, but that's completely up to you. All right, if we close that out, we'll just go to initiative or fantasy stat blocks and turn that on. All right, so I'm still in the settings screen. All right, I'm under community plugins. I can see fantasy stat blocks and I can see the settings button. You can also access it from here. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're going to find the import from JSON section. All right, this is the bit we're looking for. We're gonna click this button here. All right, and basically what we're going to do is try and just get the, uh, the downloads. Now, I'm just gonna drag this in I'm going to drag the notes that I've just downloaded into this folder just so I can keep them in one place. All right, there we go. And we can see there's now two JSON files. So these are the same things I just downloaded from GitHub. All right, so I'm going to use the generic. I'm going to install that first. All right, and then I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to do the NPC. All right, if we come down here, we can now see these options are available. We can click edit. All right, we can see the layout has been loaded. We can go to a previewer, all right, and get a preview of this. Looks like we need to actually select a creature for this to work with, which we don't have right now, right? That's gonna be the next step. But you can change the layout. Now, for anyone who hasn't played with this, is actually really 
easy, right? You can drag things around and move them and see how they like, and you can edit the type of blocks that they are. All right, I've done videos on that previously, so we're not gonna go into that today. But the purpose of this is just for you to basically add these into here. Now, assuming I'm playing Call of Cthulhu, what I'm gonna do is actually change my default layout to actually be one of these. And you can see that it's not actually loaded here currently. So let's just basically leave settings and come back in and see if that becomes an option. All right, it's still not there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to reload Obsidian. So I'm gonna come over to Open Command Palette. I'm gonna type Reload and just let the Obsidian application reload. You can see that was super quick. Now, if we come back into Fantasy Stat Blocks, come down to the basic layout, we can see that they have been added. All right, so that's pretty common. When you add a new layout to um, Fantasy Stat Blocks, it generally does need to reload the application. And whenever I make super big changes to Fantasy Stat Blocks, I do like to restart Obsidian just to make sure it picks up all of those changes. All right, so default layout's now been set. Uh, we can now basically close this off. Now, while I am here though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and disable the fifth edition SRD because I don't want those monsters, all right? I am gonna turn on automatically pass front matter for creatures. What this means is that any creatures that are stored inside of a note, all right? Instead of the plugin itself, inside of the note will be added to the fantasy stat block plugin. All right, and I've got a bestiary folder set up here. That's important as well. I've got a slash. Now, I'm not gonna change that, but if I had a folder where I was specifically keeping my monsters, I would add that folder here. And ideally, I would actually remove this one here by pressing that button, because if I leave it, it's gonna scan my whole vault every time you open up Obsidian to find the monsters, all right? If you remove that and put a specific folder, it's gonna be a much quicker process. It's gonna be easier passing that data through. All right, let's go through and click close. All right, now let's just have a look. What we have is we've got two different stat blocks that were provided. I'm just gonna open these up in the notepad. All right, so here's one, and you can see here that it's got a stat block. This is an NPC layout. All right, now some of you may recognize that the name here is exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of the content of this note, this example that's been provided. I'm gonna create a new note. All right, and in this note, I'm going to control shift V to paste it cleanly. All right, and we can see already that this has started to pick up some changes. All right, so we've got age 24 expedition leader. His name is Robert Blaine. I'm just going to copy that into here. All right, so now this is Robert Blaine. Uh, he's an age, age 24 expedition leader. I'll put some, uh, just some different formatting in here. And we can come down here and we can see that we've got the issues. Now, right now, it's actually forcing two columns by the looks of it, I reckon. Let's have a look here. No, there's nothing that's forcing the column. I do wonder if there's like a CSS file maybe that I need to actually turn on because it's weird for me that it's actually do that. So I'm just gonna pause the video and see if I can figure this out. All right, took me a little bit here to figure this out, but what I found, if I go to settings, you will notice that my page looks a little bit different. I did go into editor and turn readable line length off. That just adds the margins on the side and if you expand out another note you can see it leaves fairly big margins in the side it's designed for reading big notes big notes i don't use that i turn it off so it takes up the whole page um, that's got nothing to do with this layout though you can see that when that turns off i'm still basically cutting off half of this right hand side here so what i did is i went to settings i went down to fantasy stat blocks i went into uh, the npc layout here and went edit had a look at advanced and you can see here there's actually always try to split the columns by this um, we've got the width in pixels all right it's actually split to two and we've got a force option now i'm just going to try turning the force option off and click save all right and then we're going to get out of the note and come back in no we're going to try to reload it all right, it's still basically cutting off the side of that. All right, so let's go back in. Let's try fantasy stat blocks again. We're gonna go edit on the NPC one and have a look at advanced. I'm gonna change it to one. 
and put it back to the default of 400. All right, we might leave it at two and default 400. We'll click save. Click go, get out of the note, come back in. There we go. That already looks a bit better to me. All right, because you can see, I can see most of the side there. I think that's actually, that is the edge. All right, so that's better for me. And I can expand that out and I can now see the options. All right, now you might have some different needs. You might have a bigger screen. All right, and the person who made this may have a, a large screen. So therefore they've put those settings in there for a reason. So just be aware that you can go into fantasy stat blocks, come down to your, your layout and have a look under advanced and you can actually hard code how these work if you want. Um, there's also options here for colors and things if you guys want to play around with that. Um, all right, so that works. Uh, we've got a stat block. I don't know anything about COC currently, all right? So I can't tell you how good, good a stat block is, um, but obviously you can see that it's loaded. I really like that it's got this drop down bit here. That's an interesting uh, addition. All right, so that's one of the, uh, the options. Uh, we've also got this dark young note that was downloaded from the uh, the the, um, the Google Drive here. All right, so the dark young .md. This is another example that uh, G Byron has uh, uploaded for everybody. So let's just have a look here. All right, what we can see with this one specifically is the layout here is actually set differently. All right, so this uses the generic layout, um, and if we have a look at this one. We can see we are getting a similar issue with the cutoff. All right, I might turn that one off. If I turn the side pane on, does that work differently? No, it does, it hits that max. So we're gonna to go to settings. We're gonna come down to the generic layout. We're gonna go edit. We're gonna go advanced. I'm going to turn off force columns and I'm gonna return this to the default. And I'm gonna click the save button. Now, if we get out of that note and come back in, there we go. It's now a lot thinner. All right, and you can see it now does default back to one column if it needs to, based on whatever screen space is available. So I personally do recommend you don't hard code these things. Like I prefer to have it so that you can uh, have a bit of flexibility, right? Because something I like to do sometimes is drag my notes out, have multiple panes going. You might have one at the top, one at the bottom, and you see how if you don't hard code the, um, uh, the width of your fantasy stat blocks, it just takes up the space that's available. I personally find that that works a lot better. Now, for both of these, the important takeaway for you is that there's actually a note here, all right, that tells you the layout of how this could work. So you can change the name, you can change the title, you can change all of these sort of documents here. If you want to change your spell powers, you can modify the descriptions, all right? You can change the HP, you can modify this. Now, what I do once I've got one of these stat block layouts available to me is I will generally take a copy. I will make a folder called ZC underscore templates. Inside of that, I will have a note saying, uh, let's go C O C stat block template um, and this one we will call what is this one this is the NPC so we'll go NPC template all right so now we've got that layout in this note and what that effectively means is when I create a new NPC note I can actually come in here and press alt T no I can't it's a brand new vault I haven't set up my hotkeys uh, I haven't even turned on the core plugin template actually. So okay, let's just do that. It's on uh, template folder on location, Z templates. There we go. We're going to go hotkeys. We're going to go template, insert template. We're going to go alt T. I'm going to save that. All right. As you can see, brand new vault, never used it. Alt T, we now have a template available. We press it. We now have that in the note. All right whatever the content you put into that template is going to be inserted when you use that template. So you might want to just go and change this so it says name, right, and enter desk here. All right, you might want to change your description of your template so it's very generic. Um, or you might want to leave the, uh, the information that's there so that you've got a working example of what that data should look like. 
completely up to you. The point being, it's very easy for you to then insert that into a new note and then to create basically a new monster from it because you can just come through and go, all right, his name's not Robert Blaine anymore. All right, his name is now Bob, just Bob. All right, Bob's not an expedition leader. He's a beer drinker. All right, we, we bring that back. Bob is the beer drinker. Okay, so that's it, right? It's, it's that easy to use a custom stat block. Um, if you were to go over to um, Javelin's, obviously, GitHub, have a look at the discussions and go through all of these different ones that are available. There are so many different layouts to try here, guys. And generally what you'll see is they provide a picture of what it looks like. There's an example of the data, all right? And they provide the JSON file, all right? Because you need all three things. Like this one here, for example, has got quite a, a hefty data layout, which would be your template that you, 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 you would use. Uh, these guys have actually got some zip files with the content. You can see what it looks like. All right, there's the Stormtrooper one. This one's always impressed me because they managed to get these icons working in there. Um, here's a really cool one. There's a 5e character sheet one there. All right, so there's lots and lots of different options. Fantasy Stat Blocks is not just for 5e and it's not just for Pathfinder. It supports lots of games. All right, and if it doesn't support the game you need, you can make your own layout quite easily share it with the community and get everyone on board. All right, anyway, we'll leave it there. That's how you go ahead and get this installed. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, hopefully it helps you overcome some of the issues you may face when you when you obviously use this. Um, and yeah, get you on your journey to playing Call of Cthulhu. Sounds interesting. Anyway, guys, have a great night and I will speak to you on the socials.